like that. The Jax was not able to team fight. And as we go into the second game, that's exactly what they've done. They say, all right, okay, sorry, Ali, buddy. You're on the Ord. At least you got your ult, uh, your ult button to bring into the fights. Ooh, is there a Blitzcrank hook? Ooh, is there a Blitzcrank hook? He sees him. He knows somebody's there. The and he well. catches him. The knock up and everything. But Ala will flash away and get himself out. That was so close there for being disaster. They put Ala on tank duty and he's already got himself no flash. All possible. Well, Tarzan is around here. Maybe they go for a flash hook, flash knock up onto Uzi. That looks like it's going to be the play. They just bought him out, but maybe a little bit too little too late. Flash, flash. Nicely done there by the supports. They are going to try to trade this one back very healthily, though, because Uzi was not the target, and he feels emboldened to take back a much more favorable trade. Still have the hex flash for the Blitzcrank as well. Very important to keep note of. This time around, EDG kind of keeping themselves in tow and having 100% dragon kill participation uh, in this game as uh, Fofo... Might be getting caught out here a little bit. We are not going to have the hook land. Hong thought about it, but definitely a, definitely a wise decision maybe not to go over that wall completely because he probably would have gotten 100 to 0 by the Nico. I was about to say, ultimates there. Pop lost into so much work. And um, Fofo, of course, getting hands on this champion, which has been very high presence in the LPL as well. All of our mid laners love to play this one. I was hoping we might see a bit of it jungle or top lane. I feel like Nico still has that versatility. Uh, no one's really experimented with that much. Not that there's been much opportunity to work with it in experimentation because it's always banned, but still, once again in the mid lane. Happy to know that his flash is back up and available for him, despite him getting caught out a little bit. There is a good hook straight onto Uzi. He just didn't respect the feathers. We'll actually try and turn this one back. Has got the red and white for the moment. Tarzan not level six though, but there's a Jace coming in off the side. This could be an accelerated shock blast to try and catch him out, but he guesses incorrectly. It lands onto Mako. He doesn't know that it was Mako he hit, and that's why he went chasing on it. Sorry, he thought maybe it was enough of a help bar from Uzi, but Uzi just not respect that one. And they know you're in that brush. You need to leave. Ooh, Mako has to tank that one up for his AD carry. And look at the presence that LNG are putting in this bot side. Scout could go again. He's got an acceleration gate again. Timing the minion wave, trying to fire it out. He stops this flash. Oh, oh that is Lord. so disgusting. He's dead. He's dead. And as I say that, just patience and perseverance coming in here. There's even an Amalkai ultimate there. Well, it's not only just a kill. Look at the bot lane farm that's being eaten up by this turret. They're going to lose two, three waves now. I realize I can't really let that one uh, sit for too long because you might think I DC again. So again, just not <laughs> recognizing the the little feathers that are coming okay. down. Sometimes and... we DC into into Zaya feathers as well. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Uzi just, just yeah, caught out it. on the wave. I was really surprised to see him get, get him caught out in that position given, you know, he could have just walked behind the minions to escape that Blitzcrank hook. Uh, it's a momentary misplay though. Micro not working is, in the favor he, he of He just goes behind the turret. He's fine. Like, it's the fact that he keeps trying to recall. He keeps trying to get the cheeky one off. And it's like, just go back. Just walk. And you should be fine. But uh, just does not respect the fact that Scout is around. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, the, the way that the body language was... So, sort of waiting for a Formako, who does have Flash available to him. But, you know who doesn't? Uh, Uzi. And uh, he's going to try and tank this one up for his AD carry and try and turn this one back. But they wow. can just turn straight onto him. There is a one for nothing trade for the moment. The TP comes in. The pop blossom has to be defensive. And immediately into a grab. Fofo just thought he had himself a little bit of a jump opportunity and gets immediately taken out. That is such a huge play for LNG because once again, it just puts the hammer down towards this bot side of the map. We heard from the interviews before game one. This game was likely going to come around bot lane advantage. And you can see that Uzi did a great job despite a difficult situation in game one. But now he's being put behind. Can he do the same when LNG start taking off towards bot side? Yeah, and look, you could be literally the greatest AD carry in LPL history, but I just don't see that helping out from the mistakes that are coming out from EDG. Again, it's just little things like this that I just feel like are just crippling so much this split. Come back towards the bot side. As you said, uh, it's the Milio who does have the flash, but doesn't have the chance to use it. Uh, of course, just not able to really get huge value out of it. And LNG will be difficult to do. Hong getting jumped on now as he goes to get a little bit of a speed boost. Moonlight Vigil doesn't do a huge amount, but it does take out Hong. Now they're going to try and turn back onto Uzi. He's got the grab on the Inferno, so he's going to be doing a hell of a lot of damage on this AoE. Fofo goes down once more. The Orn isn't here just yet. The That's actually a stolen hook, but why would you take the Scion of all the carries to go for? He just thought it was too tantalizing. He gets punished because of it. I... Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, doesn't get the chance to walk away. Zika's tanking up on that one item, and he just does not give a monkeys.
Dragon's still open available. It is going to be started up here by the Orn, who will take an eternity to do it. He will do it, but it will take a while to do it. Now we're going to see the Ornhorn coming out to try and catch out Tarzan, who does have his ultimate to try and disengage. Hook stops the Orn from getting anything else out of this one. Zika still moving forward. Hong dies again. He's going to be taken out of his team one more time. But now look at Gala, who's just feathers flying forward. Fofo trying to jump in at the three-man pop blossom, but they don't have the damage to follow up onto this. Uzi's got no mana. Finally, Ala takes down the Jays, trying to reset this fight. But Gala, with the feathers, stops his advance. It's a scrappy affair, but LNG still coming out even, all things considered. Fofo's pop blossom completely saves the day. Scout goes over aggressive. And even then, LNG are looking to punish that. Yeah, look already now, Hong saying, I died three times, but I'll kill you, Uzi, and that's all that matters. Gala now 2-0 and 4 on this Zaya. Just showing how crazy good this AD carry is here, regardless of what team he's playing for. Absolutely. So this fight starts up once again with Hong pulling the shots. Clutch Ooh, route nice from Uzi. Going. Stops him getting the instant 100 to 0 at that point. Plays it very well at the start of this, and that removes an important pick potential from LNG and allows EDG to play around for once some actual decent damage in one of these fights. This was the awkward moment where that's not your priority hook target. He absolutely slaughters you. Yeah. Just gets I mean, absolutely he's... turned around on. His ult didn't even break the shield. That was uh, kind of the moment. And again, this is a scrappy moment here where Fofo had to get that pop blossom in order to turn this one around because this could have been LNG to, to completely ace them. I think EDG maybe disrespected the fact that Zika could also be in that brush as well. Maybe thought he'd recall. Dangerous moment here. The flash away from Alice saves his life. Watch what Scout does here. They're very close to getting the kill onto JJ. The knock-up portion of Nico's ult, though, cancels out the melee form of the Jace. If that had happened a second too late, I think Jace ends up getting away with another kill, and we saw how much damage Scout was already doing. Already Gets silenced, gets not knocked up, actually. Still will go down. Nice little fancy feat from Fofo, but it was all for naught. And Hong on this Blitzcrank, again, just showing the power of hard engaged supports. Just showing that you know, once you get caught up on the, you know, kind of side lanes, there's just nowhere. Harold going to be taken down by EDG. It's important for them to try and break up in some part of the map. They're very close to breaking down this mid lane out of turret. Zika takes offense to that, though. Fight starts, Tarzan going forward, they haven't locked down their target yet, and now they have Uzi once again, struggling to stand and fight, struggling to DPS, and goes down for trying to overpush in that mid lane. Herald was taken from EDG, important moment for them. They just overpushed, they split a little too far, LNG collapsed on the fight yet again, and now they will look to take open this mid lane out of turret, if they can. Good route there from the Nico. Threaten scholar enough for him to blow his ult, but once again, Uzi really struggling to hold his ground. Uh, yeah, that's uh, he thought he was in a 1v1. He thought it was an intimate 1v1 with a top laner of EDG, but JJ said, nah, that's my man, and you ain't going to be taking nobody into a 1v1. It's great to see this from LNG as well. We had a couple of questions about them in summer, you know, after their spring collapse in playoffs where they really fell apart, sadly, for them. What was going to happen to them? Now they have themselves a good combo. They're playing, them, playing out these competitions very cohesively. Go. They have to disengage. Yeah, they're going to have to disengage. Gala doesn't even flinch. Flash, Ghost, and Ult all kept under wraps. Now they can throw out the ultimate from the Maokai to try and see if they can burn down this tower. Going to be able to do so. So, oh, Uzi forces out the ultimate. Big ultimate teleport for the flank. This could be the moment. Fofo has the flash and has the damage, but he's taken away from Gala. The Zaya lives. The disengage comes through once more. LNG put the phalanx up and they walk away. Spears still pointed at EDG. That felt like the moment, but they're not able to punch back. Not quite able to do it. Great play by playing there from you, Nymera. Thank you. Absolutely delighted for you. Needed to give you, you know what? I said, you know what? I thought to myself, I was like, you know what would be a big test? A big 5v5 team fight late in the game. You did, you did exceptional. Congratulations to you. But LNG, as you mentioned, get the kill. They disengage and they get themselves on the sole point. While that's happening, they're actually going to force the TP out of Ala as well to try and cover that Zika was covering into the top side. Really crazy, though, that it felt like Fofo was absolutely going to murder Gala. Um, we'll see that a little bit into this replay, I have to, I have to assume. So um, it's a little bit hard to put the Blitz Crank out uh, hook under turret when, of course, the Orn can go unstoppable. After this point, you feel like this is the moment where EDG are going to get themselves back in the game. You have huge amounts of damage. Gala goes down to solo HP. If anything hits from Fofo, that is a dead Zaya. Flashes out. 
and yeah. hooks away from the damage <laughs> portion of the Nico wall. I've not seen that before. It's a clutch moment and it saves Gala's life. I mean, this is just LNG playing like LNG have been, you know, for most of spring regular split. Again, putting themselves up with this victory if they're able to secure it to five and two alongside the likes of, you know, top esports, JDG, Weibo. These are the, the names that we talk about so often when it comes to these, you know, this league. And I mean, we talked about it a little bit earlier is that we only get to send four people to international and it does feel like... Well, it feels like a travesty. <laughs> it, it does feel like a travesty. Like it really, really does. But at the end, at the end of the day, for me, LNG are one of those teams that could maybe go to the Worlds, could also miss it very easily as well. It does feel that way, particularly in spring. I thought they were a top two team. I loved the way that Tarzan and Scout played as a mid jungle. And you can tell the power that these two have. They are one of our very best mid jungles in the LPL, maybe even in the world. It's been a bit of a slow closeout from LNG again. It's very hard to go into the Zert, the Ophelos with the melee on top of him. That Enchanter, the primary Enchanter right now, very strong. <laughs> Not quite able to land that hook there. Almost landed on the JJ, who is fairly tanky in his own right. But for the moment, LNG still holding it. And that's the thing, is that LNG not only have themselves a very similar team fight composition in terms of, like, you know, having a front-to-back team fight with the tanks and everything like that, but they have the added extra of a Blitzcrank. They have the added extra of the poke that can come out from this Jace and just burn out someone like the Makos or the, yeah, someone like Mako on the Milio. So... It just feels like their composition does everything that EDGs does, and a little bit more. And they've definitely been playing it that way. The gold advantage certainly helps. It means that EDG can't brute force their way into as many fights as they would like. They have on items that help. Uzi! With the hook lines of Uzi! Oh, that's all they needed! Fantastic hook there from Hong! And that means that you don't really have the damage to continue this fight. Two-man decimating smash into the knockback of Fofo. He will have nothing to do with this fight. Scout with the triple. 506 under Gala, but my MVP is going to be hung in the Blitzcrank. That was a hook from the heavens. Hang, draw, and quarter him. EDG. They've just been blown out 2-0 by LNG. First game, they had the soul. Felt like they could team fight their way to a victory, but LNG weren't going to let them have it. They're not going to let Ala have his life as well. LNG, they're back on form, baby, and they're walking in towards the Nexus. Massive 2-0 victory here for LNG. And Gala says, I wasn't your understudy, Uzi. I was your replacement. That is a definitive win here for the side of LNG as they look to continue themselves up to the top of the table. It took a little while in both games. I think that's testament to the level of team fighting which EGG do display, particularly Uzi. You can't ever let him get into a pocket of, uh, of space to turn around and auto attack you. And even in that game, you could feel that for the majority of it until the hook comes through. That is one of the reasons you picked that champion. It took us a while to see Blitzcrank coming back into pro play. It was a very long time ago where he was really meta. We saw it a little bit around the Tom Kench meta where we could see him deny the Tom Kench shield. But Hong really communicating with his team while using the ability of that Maokai ult or anything else to set up point and click abilities to get that hook into the right place. And LNG, they only get to play this team once. It's important that they can walk yeah. away with that win just as it feels like EDG might be ramping up again with the addition with Uzi to the roster. It's an important victory today for them. Absolutely agree. And I think that for LNG as well, there's a lot of question, you know, a lot of questions coming into the split as well. They were very